everyone welcome it's Annette Green here and what you're looking at is a cute little organizer for all the things that are kind of laying loose on my craft table here in the craft studio and that's what we're going to make today this is my first project and share for 2024 and we're going to build this ourselves I'm going to tell you all about it uh, I did have something very similar. This was a Lori Whitlock file. Lori Whitlock has a lot of SVG files. It's a complete shop full of wonderful things. And I kind of added to it. I added some different layers and things to it. And this was cute, okay? It's got bees all over it. It's black, it's yellow, it's, it's great, it's sturdy. But I wanted something that didn't stick out quite as far, wasn't as deep. And I didn't need, you know, three in a row this way. So I did a four compartment organizer. I completely redesigned it myself, made my own SVG. So now I can put all my goodies in here. It's wonderful. And I'm going to show you exactly how we make it step by step. And if you don't have a Cricut machine, I'll tell you. But look at all this stuff. It's awesome. Now, if you're here and you're wondering, where is her weekly video? Is she doing weekly pages anymore in her planner? Uh, the answer is, yes, I am. And if you care to continue to follow me doing that, then you can hop over to my new private Facebook group, Weekly Memory Keeping with Annette. I'm going to share my pages every week there as well. And then at the end of the month, I'll do a video. But um, I haven't gone away. I'm just going to do some new crafty projects now. And I'll just show you how pretty it looks there. It matches my new craft studio design with the pink and the green and the little bit of accents of gold. But yeah, here's my craft table. Normally, those things would be loose up here on the counter. And now they are tucked away so pretty in that little organizer. Okay, and there's two ways that you can do this project. One is to purchase the Etsy file, the SVG that I have designed. Uh, you do have to have a Cricut machine or a Silhouette or some sort of cutting machine, and you should be pretty handy with knowing how to ungroup, attach, make lines into score lines, all that good stuff before you begin. And the other method would be, of course, to watch to the end of the video and I will show you how to cut all the pieces by hand if you don't have a cutting machine and don't want to buy the SVG file. And just in case you wanted a little behind the scenes look at developing an SVG of your own, <laughs> I do have, you know, I have some directions here. I work it all out. I do all the math. I do all the test pieces by hand first. And then I make sure that it works. I do a little dummy model of the whole thing and then I tweak it and then I finalize the SVG file. Okay, so as for supplies, you will need four sheets of a base cardstock. Um, whatever base color it is going to show, you want it to be, then that's what you will pick. So you need four sheets of that. Uh, you'll need one like matte color. In my case, I'm using this pine green for my base. I'm gonna use a, one sheet of gold metallic cardstock. This can be anything whatever is going to mat your paper and your paper will be your main you know star of the show in this case I'm using the petal pink this pretty page here and another page from in there as you'll see that has this on it so just one page or two you know depending on where you're cutting from like I, I didn't want to use all from one piece of paper so I did use a little bit from both but you could use one sheet of paper for this part other things you will need is maybe some ink to ink the edges definitely if you're using cardstock that has a white core like mine you'll want to ink all around all those pieces first before you ever start to assemble uh, you'll need some adhesive and a maybe a bone folder to really get those edges crisp on those folds. I would definitely recommend some kind of clips, clothes pins, these tiny little sewing clips. Have at least four to eight at the ready. And that's just to help hold things while the glue is drying. Using liquid glue, which is mainly what I use through the whole thing. I use the Nuvo um, glue with a wider nozzle so I could get a lot of liquid glue on there and that for me is easier to get the pieces in place and slide them. If you prefer you can definitely use tape runner but for me that just doesn't work. I can't get it lined up exactly right and if I can't move it I'm in trouble. Uh, the other thing I would recommend is to have a baby wipe kind of at the ready. I like to put mine into a little cup like this with a lid that way it stays moist but while I'm working on the project I keep it balled up in the cup with the lid off and that way you know when you get gluey fingers you can just kind of do that real quick. 
Now we'll begin the assembly and just know that even if you go to the end of the video and you watch how to cut all your pieces, the assembly that I'm doing here will be exactly the same steps. So you'll want to go forward in the video to cut all your pieces and then come back for the assembly part. For now I'm going to assemble the Cricut pieces that I have cut out, the SVG file. And I'm going to ink all the edges of my pretty paper with just a little bit of frayed burlap on the edge just so I don't see that uh, white core. And then I've grabbed my forest moss for my kind of pine colored cardstock here. So I'm going to get that out of the way first before we assemble. Okay, and I have decided uh, one more piece of something that you might want to have is just some chipboard. And you need at least enough for the same size as this base, which is seven and an eighth inches by six and an eighth. And I just happen to have this scrap. And this is the base, so I want it to be strong. My one that I did previously with the bees and stuff all over it, um, did have a thin chipboard at the base and it just made it that much more strong so when I go to pick it up and there's glue in there I don't have to worry about holding the bottom that it's going to sag I mean this is super duper strong but there is that thin layer of that chipboard there so I am adding that to your supplies as a suggestion Start with that and for this large piece I'm just going to use a good old yoohoo glue stick it doesn't matter what kind of glue stick as long as you know it sticks uh, this stuff is superb, definitely sticks well, and I'm just going to cover this completely all the way around every edge, no corner left unglued, and get this adhered to that blackboard, and then I will trim it all out once I feel like the glue has really dried and set, because, you know, it is kind of wet, and it's sticky. I know a lot of you don't like glue stick, but sometimes it's essential for these bigger pieces. So I'm just going to get that on there. And I'll trim, of course, the excess black here in a bit. Maybe a brayer, like a rolling brayer or a flat edged bone folder like this would be good to really get that pressed down smooth and flat set and ready. I'm going to set that aside. Uh, if you don't have a heavy duty paper trimmer that can cut through chipboard, you can just use a ruler and a mat and a nice sharp craft knife. Just remember to, you know, do several light passes with your craft knife rather than, you know, really hard push and trying to get it on the first pass. You want to just go ahead and assemble your layers. And so we're going to just start with the pretty paper and put it on our accent cardstock, which in my case is the gold. And again, because it's such a big piece here, I'm going to use glue stick. Definitely liquid glue is fine. Uh, just make sure you get all the way out to those corners and edges. And this is measured in such a way that it should float perfectly in the middle with about an eighth of an inch all the way around. See how I can slide and take my time with the glue stick. Uh, the number one thing with glue stick that might be a concern with a lot of people when they use it, and you can see it happening, uh, there's a lot of water or moisture in liquid, uh, in glue sticks, so it does want to curl the paper when it's not dry yet. It will flatten, but if you're concerned about it, and this is what I do, uh, I just put the pieces on a flat table and put a book on top until they're dry. So now I'm doing the same thing on the back of the gold. If you use liquid glue, just use your finger to get all that, you know, so you don't have little wiggle lines. Use your finger or a brush or something to really spread that nice and flat and even because a lot of times you will see those little squiggles uh, through the paper on your project or bubbles. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to set that aside with a book, piece of paper and a book on top of it and just move through all the rest of those pieces. And it's really just the back piece. This is the front piece and then the two side pieces that have all these layers to them. So I'll get those done now. Pieces over there under a book, drying and staying flat. Uh, I'm going to put aside these for now. 
and you will see in the directions, especially um, when I talk about it later and when you do, if you use the SVG file, that you will need to cut two of a particular file. And that is these pieces here. So the file will look like this, this particular download, because there's two parts in the SVG, so the file is not too big and unmanageable. So this would be one file, and I'll pop a picture up of all the pieces so you can kind of see. Uh, but this would be one file, and you'll need to cut that twice. And then the other file is the bigger piece that just has that, and you'll need to cut that twice. Depending on your machine, I have the Cricut Maker, and it uses the scoring wheel, uh, which doesn't put a huge score line. It does put a little mark, and I can see it pretty good on this particular cardstock. But if you were using something thicker or textured and you really can't see that line, uh, just know that it's a half inch score wherever you see a little tab sticking out. And this is where the bone folder is. Helpful to really crease all those little folds. And if you have any kind of cracking at all, I do see a little bit of that happening here with this particular cardstock. I can always hit it with some more of that green ink before I start to assemble. Uh, another thing that you could do if you have really heavy cardstock and you're not able to fold as easily on these scores as I am, is you can, I'll grab this new one here, get your scoreboard out and you can just line it up grab a stylus and just kind of line up the score with one of the, you know, the lines here on your scoreboard. It's just, uh, sometimes it doesn't line right up if you just stick it in here. So you just want to make sure, top to bottom, you're actually in a channel when you go to score. And like I said, they're all half inch, so it's pretty easy to just kind of glide on down and gently rescore. If you're using the Cricut, or even if you're going to do the cut your own method at the end of this video, um, to maybe help with that cracking not happening as much, here's a little tip. So every piece of cardstock has sort of a grain to it, right? So if you fold it one way, it's a little harder to fold than another way. See how easy this is folding? But if I go to fold it that way, it's sort of kind of fighting. So this is the grain, okay? And you want to cut with the grain when you're doing scores, because it makes sense, right? If, if this is easier to fold, you're not going to have that cracking. If you turned your paper like this to cut it in your Cricut or your Silhouette, it's going to fight against the grain and you're going to get more cracking. So, once you discover which way is that easy folding way, that's your grain, put that on your mat and cut it this way in your machine because most of your score lines are going to be vertical. There's a few that go this way, and they're all going to be hidden, those. But these are the ones that show these vertical ones, most of them. So those are the ones you want to be really concerned with when you're figuring out your grain. I will say that now that I did that little demonstration with folding on the score lines, but scoring first with your stylus, that is doing such a better job. See how I had to kind of push that into place, that one there, but this one I use the scoring stylus, it just folds back so easy. So maybe that's something I would recommend, is just go ahead and use a stylus to rescore. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think they've improved, at least Cricut hasn't, on the scoring wheel as far as going a little deeper in the paper. If it did, uh, I know you can increase the pressure, things like that, but uh, if it did improve, and there's something I don't know, please let me know. All right, I'm going to continue with these other two, and then we'll start putting that together. Well, I just realized I didn't have my microphone on my body. Sorry about that for those last couple of steps. Uh, now, I don't need to, but I'm going to. <laughs> I'm inking these edges of these ones that are not cracking because I've already done it on some other pieces, and I think it'll look funny if you see that little bit of dark inking on some parts of this and not on others. So the inking is definitely not necessary unless you have cracking. And perhaps I cut that very first piece that you watched me score. Maybe I cut that against the grain on the Cricut. Maybe I wasn't following my own 
example. Maybe I didn't even pay attention. So we're ready to start assembling. Now I'm going to start with the small guys that are like this for the front and then later we'll do the two bigger guys for the back part. Uh, one thing that I did learn as I was making my little uh, prototype here is that I preferred to see a nice clean inside. So in the back here, if you notice, there are no little tabs showing on the inside at all. Those are all folded around to the back and then we cover them up with these panels so it's super clean and neat looking. As opposed to the front, do you see that little tab right there? Can you see it right there? It was only in that one place for some reason I had it coming forward and you can see that in the compartment. Now it's going to be filled with stuff. Do you care? Um, maybe not, but I care. I like it to be as neat and as pretty. And if I'm going to take the time to make this, I want it to be really nice. So what that means is when we go to put this together, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this small panel. And as we know, probably from looking, it is a rectangle. It's not a square. So it's three and a half wide by three and three quarters tall. And we want the three and three quarters to be the tall, tall, right? We're going to slide it right in there and put that together. It's a back wall to our little compartment. So what I want you to do first is you have your little half inch tab here. We're going to glue this to the front inside of that right before the score happens. Don't get it right in the score. So let's put a little glue here and now I've switched to liquid glue and you'll see I don't go super heavy and I don't go all the way out to the edges yet. This is where I get my glue, gluey fingers. So I'm going to take my pinky and I'm just going to get that out to the edge a little bit real quick and then I'm going to grab my little rectangle but as long as you can lift this up without any struggle you've got it right before that score line so that's great and we're not worried about this we're going to cover that up all right so I will proceed then by putting glue on the inside of this tab and coming around and gluing that together just like that. Same thing on this other side. All those tabs are going to be around the back or the bottom. So the final thing that you see will be something like this. Everything will be in the back or in the bottom. All those tabs and this will be nice and neat inside. Once again, just get it all the way out to those edges. I'm not getting down into the fold area too close. Corners are important and edges, outer edges. Okay, and like I said, we will bring this around and working flat on the table is highly recommended. Nice, you can get a nice squared up edge because this is one of those projects that if you start kind of carelessly and you don't worry too much about it being squared up, things really come out of kilter later. So you want to be as careful and precise as possible. So I'll just do this other one really quick and I think you're getting the idea. Okay. Like I said, this is the Nuvo glue from Tonic, but honestly, art glitter glue will work beautifully. Barely art glue will work beautifully. You know, many liquid glues, whatever you're comfortable with and you know works for you. And one of the key things about this is just to take your time. Don't rush this. If you wanted to, you could stop here and go on to the next one and do those two steps first. Just to let this dry because I just picked this up a moment ago to put glue here and this came away. So um, I didn't give it enough time to dry and there's no rush. You know, you're not on the clock to get this done, I hope. So this is the back. As we move forward with the other pieces, of course, this will go much faster. And you may be tempted to just lift that up. But again, let's get it started in your hands, but let's get it on the table and really get it squared up in there and really press and square up that corner. Okay, my first little compartment is done. 
Uh, by the way, my cardstock is 85 pounds, so thicker cardstock, uh, you know, is going to be great as well. You might get a little more cracking, but uh, this is looking pretty good. Now it looks a little flimsy now, but by the time we get everything glued together in our reinforcement walls on the outside and the center, this is going to be super strong. For the next step, we're going to glue these two together, the larger and the smaller one, and just in a row like this. So what we want to do is to have your clips ready, and I am going to use liquid glue for this. And you'll see me, I'm going to use a lot. Just get it on there quickly, especially if you're using art glitter glue, which tends to dry a little faster. The Nouveau and the Barely Art, um, you have a little more time. That's why I kind of like working with that for this particular project. Uh, you can do this again with your finger, especially out to those edges in the corner. Not so much in the middle. I don't think it's going to matter a lot in this case. Have that baby wipe ready. Okay, and then we're going to glue these two together. So just take your time and square them up. And the key here is to use your clips on these little corners. And I'll show you why in a moment. And I'm clipping them right at the corner. Make sure everything's squared up before you clip it and commit. We've got a little wavy spot here. Okay, clip it there and there. And I might put just a few clips here so there's no gap. You can always squeak a little glue in there if you need to, and I did need to on my little prototype over there, like especially in here, but you know, we're going to cover this so it doesn't matter, but you just do want to make sure and get your hands in there and push those pieces together the best you can. We don't want big gaps, of course. So I'm just pressing all below those clips, all along those two panels to hold them together. And you can see it's nice and square at the bottom. And so I'll set that aside to dry and I'll do the other one just the same way. The reason why we use the clips is because the um, this area right here, see that little detail where you see the little pucker, like a opening? Small detail, not a big deal. But, you know, if you want to make it as neat and as pretty as possible, that's why we clip it really tight at those corners so we don't have any of those weird gaps like that. Okay, this one is together, just giving it a press. Uh, if you didn't have any kind of clips at all, even clothespins. Uh, you can use paper clips. That will be just fine. Okay, so just so you have your head around what's happening next, this third piece, because we had the two with the decorative paper on it, this is going to be sort of a reinforcement wall between these two units. Okay, so we just need to get this on here. And I wouldn't rush it, you know, make sure that your glue has set. This is the first one that I did, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And I am checking it first. Always do that, you know, because depending on how you pushed things together, things could be off just a little tiny bit with the pieces. So if you have to make any adjustments, it's good to do that now before you get too far. Next, this, instead of gluing these two sort of flimsy things together, we're going to grab our base. And, um, you know, I have green on the bottom. You could leave the green on the top, but you're about to cover it all up. So I'm going to turn it black side up so the green is on the bottom. And I'm going to adhere my first unit here right to the top of the base. And then I'll eventually get this one on here. But I'm just checking to make sure it looks like it's a perfect size. So I'm going to cover the bottom of this with glue and get it right on there. Really get your hands in there. Press it, press it, press it. Looks good. It's going to make this so nice and solid with that chipboard layer. Very nice. Really getting my thumbnail down in there and pressing those corners. Back here, I'll just use my fingers. All those corners really squared up. And if I were to pick that up and take a peek, it looks pretty darn neat. You have to work very quickly because you have to use glue on the side and the bottom as well. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> so you definitely want to move very quickly depending on your glue how quickly but I am again going to use my little clips 
and clip a whole bunch of areas here so those hold together nice and tight and then I can get my hand in there and really push all that down and get those corners kind of square. Looks good. Okay, if you start to see any of this happening, like you just didn't get in there fast enough with your glue, uh, you can squeak a little bit more under there. And if the space is way too tight and you can't get your glue nozzle in there, you can always do the little trick I learned from my friend Leo over at Dreaming Tree. And that is that you can take a piece of very sturdy cardstock, just a strip, and add the glue to it and slide it under there in those really tight places. I have a little bit of a situation in the back, but I don't want to pull this apart and stick my nozzle in there uh, because I've already fixed the front. So I am going to use this little trick. I've put adhesive or the glue on both sides of my little cardstock strip and snuck it in there and now I'll just give it a good press. Okay, now I'm going to cover the front and I have made sure that the base is really dry before I start this step. I'm going to cover the front with my pretty panel. Flip it down and give it a press. Make sure your table is clean before you do that. As you're going along, just keep in mind this is a homemade, handmade project. And so if it isn't coming out absolutely perfect, not to worry. By the time you put your goodies in it, it's going to be wonderful. Okay, I see this sticking out just a little bit over here. I may have to trim that, but uh, I'm happy with how that looks. Okay, and then I put some clips there as you can see I'm going to turn this sideways and get this piece on next. It doesn't really matter the order that you put this stuff on. I don't think at this point. <clears throat> okay again flip it and press. Really press. And I'll put some more clips there while that's drying, especially at those little junctures there where it wants to kind of pull away. And I'll move this guy over here. Okay, let that dry and I'll go over to the other side. Okay. Finally, our back panel. I'm sure that you're, if you're anything like me, you're good and gluey by now. So very carefully, I'm going to flip it and press. And I'll put some clips on there as well in just a moment. I did use the little trick with the strip of cardstock in this little place here because I did see there was a gap. So if you see any of those gaps, you can fix them. I see a few more that I'll fix and I'll just put a little clip on there. So let me just do one for you. You can put glue on one side or both. I don't think it matters if it has to be on both. I'm just going to slide this in here. Kind of give it a squeeze and then I'll clip that back up and that'll fix that right up. Okay, it looks great. I'm loving it. It's so pretty. It matches my craft studio beautifully. And now I have all kinds of room to start filling it up with my different glues and all the things. Like this even has a 3D stand that now I can fit right in there. It used to have to be out on the table by itself. I can put all kinds of stuff in here. My water bottle, some more glues, Lots and lots of room for your adhesives. Uh, I even keep some of these larger clips. I like to clip those right onto the organizer. I have some small things that can fit in the front. I mean, I've got all kinds of room still for more glues. I could even put some blocks in here because usually those are laying loose over here on the table too. Just a few stamping blocks to make it super handy to grab. 
So I'm super pleased with that. Oh, and you could put a little Lazy Susan on the bottom of here if you wanted to. Mine kind of slides on the table, but wouldn't that be fun to add to the bottom too? Okay, now if you are going to cut your own pieces, here is what I want you to do. Uh, for your base pieces, you're going to start with one sheet of your cardstock. I'm just going to use craft because I have a lot of it. Uh, so you'll decide what color that you like. And I want you to cut this very first piece. Now, keeping in mind of grain direction of paper. So if your paper bends really easily this way, as opposed to this way, that's the way I want you to put it into your trimmer. And I want you to cut this to 10 and a half inches. And then I want you to turn it and cut it to eight and a quarter. Okay, so eight and a quarter by ten and a half. We'll put this aside for later. This is just scrap. All right, you are going to do that twice. So let's do it again. You got your grain is going this way. So we're going to cut this at ten and a half. this at eight and a quarter. Okay. Okay, for the smaller compartment pieces, you're going to do the same thing, but this time I want you to turn it. This will make sense later. Cut this at seven and a quarter. We want to leave ourselves a lot more extra over here for the other pieces that we need. So seven and a quarter by ten and a half. And you need to do two of those as well. So if I bend this, it bends very easily, just like the other ones did on the ten and a half. So we are going to cut two at three and a half by three and three quarter, and two at three and a half by four and five eighths. So I'm going to do the four and five eighths. I think that's going to be very close to what we already have here. I'm going to do the four and five eighths first. So that's the big tick after four and a half. Just a little bit there, shaved away. And four and five eighths I said by three and a half. Grain does not matter on these pieces. So two of those. Cut those aside and then the other size was three and three quarters by three and a half. You can go ahead and keep using this. Three and three quarters three and a half, but you need two, so you're going to have to grab that other scrap. Okay, three and three and a half by three and three quarter. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Out of one of those uh, remaining pieces here, let's cut a seven and one eighth. by two and three quarter piece. Okay. You have a lot of scraps to work with here, actually. Yes, yes, yes. This one does. Exactly. Okay, well let's use that scrap to do the seven and an eighth. And then I believe this measure comes out just fine at four and three quarters. Yes, indeed. Okay, so there's that one. Now we should probably start labeling these pieces just so we don't get, you know, a little confused. So this is the back. So I would write back in pencil. Okay. This one was front. Okay. This, we're not going to label these. You have two of each of these. You're fine. Okay, and then these, we still have to cut these all apart, but the two that were the smaller size that we, st we started with the bigger size, and then we did the smaller by seven and a quarter. Uh, these are, we'll call these small, two small compartments. Okay, two large compartments. Okay. Great. Now we have to cut for the bottom, the base, 
a piece seven and an eighth by six and an eighth. And if you watch the assembly video already, you saw that I also cut a piece of chipboard the same size to make the base super, super strong. So seven and an eighth by six and an eighth. Okay, and this is your base. This is going to work out perfectly for your next cut. So this needs to be right there at that six and an eighth where we were, and hopefully your measure is close to four and three quarters here. But if it isn't, just slide it in there. Mine is like a sixteenth. It's such a sliver. <laughs> See, just that little bit had to come off. So this needs to measure six and an eighth by four and three quarters. You're going to cut three of those, and you have, I believe, enough here to do so. Uh, no, you will need one more piece. So let's do that again. Six and an eighth. Because now this is five and seven eighths. We can't use that again by four and three quarters. Okay. And then, sadly, one more from a new sheet of paper. Six and an eighth by four and three quarters. Okay, and these are, two of them are side panels, and this is the center panel. Now we have to do one more thing to these. All you're going to do here is you're going to measure with a ruler so that the height of this edge is two and three quarters. So somewhere, left or right, doesn't matter, two and three quarters, and make a little pencil mark right there at the beginning of two and three quarters. So it's two and three quarters up, and then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw a line from that two and three quarter mark up to this corner. You don't have to draw a line. You can just grab your, your knife at this point. My ruler has like a steel edge in there for cutting, so it's kind of ideal. Okay, so I will just do one clean cut. My blade isn't super sharp, so I'm going to do two. <laughs> Okay, so that is a side panel. I don't need to label it because it's the only one that looks like that. And then you need two more, so what I would do is I would stack all these pieces, get them all squared up good, and then cut them all following that first line. Okay, so you have three of those. So one is going to go on the side, the other is going to go on a side, and this one's going to go in the middle. I didn't mention a scoreboard at the beginning, but you do need one because you have to score these pieces. So this is that biggest piece, ten and a half by eight and a quarter. And we're going to score it at a half of an inch over here. And three and a half inches. Seven inches. And then ten. Okay, we're going to turn it to the left, and we will score at four and three quarters, and seven and three quarters. Okay, second piece, same way, four and three quarters, seven and three quarters. Okay, so two like that. We're going to get back to these in a minute. Now let's grab the smaller guys. So the small ones we scored in the same way as far as the verticals. Okay, make sure you're ten and a half this way. So one half inch, three and a half, and seven and ten, just like before. This time when you turn it though, you're going to score at three and three quarters and six and three quarters. Do that to both. Okay, the next step in order to get all of this happening is we have to first do a cut. Okay, and so here's what I would do. Here's our piece of paper. Um, this is our half inch score down here. We have our half inch scores out here. And this is very tall. So we're going to turn this to the left. We're going to measure over one inch. 
any kind of ruler. You can make a pencil line and do this, but I'm just going to do this in one step. And I'm just going to cut from that score line to that score line, I'm going to make a cut. Okay, nice and easy. And I try not to go past at all because what I want to do now is I want to turn the paper on an angle and I'm going to now cut from that cut ending or beginning up to this score line at the half inch. Okay, so just carefully do a little angle cut and you're going to do the same thing over on the other side just down to this first score line. You can see where maybe the SVG file is going to be a little more accurate if you aren't laying your ruler down exactly perfectly, but it's still very doable. My first sample, that uh, prototype that I made, that was all by hand, so definitely can be done. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to see this rule right here, the score line that you have, we're going to go a half of an inch over from that and we are going to, and actually you're going to get this all the way to the edge of your paper, okay, nice and straight, and we are going to cut away from here to the score line and stop and then here and stop. Okay, then we will turn it again and this time we're going to cut from the score line, not the cut line. We're going to cut straight off. We're going to cut all that away and we're going to do the same over on this side. If you've ever made a box yourself before, this is making perfect sense to you. It's very similar, so you cut that away. And now you have this, you have a little cut here and a little cut here. What I like to do next is cut this little corner square off from score to score. And when you do, you can make a little tiny bit of an angle with it. Not completely squared, just a tiny little angle. I wouldn't do a really sharp angle because it kind of messes you up when you're trying to square things up later. Um, but by doing just a tiny bit of an angle, you don't have as much bulk on that edge. So I'm doing it on all of these tabs just ever so slightly. This one, of course, gets cut away like that other one does. Slight little angle. You can even slightly angle this one and this one. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this, and when you start to fold on your scores just like I show in the assembly video. It should be easy because you've hand scored these. You're not relying on the scoring stylus in the Cricut machine or your die cutting machine. So you've got that, that same basic shape of this little slanted box. And of course we add the back to it later as you saw in the assembly video. Okay, so you're going to repeat that very same thing on the other large one. And then for the small one, it's basically the same steps, but I will do it for you. This is the smaller one, turning it to the left. So there's the scores of half of an inch over here on the right, the top and the bottom. So we're going to come down an inch just like before. We're going to cut center score to center score at the top here. And then we're going to do that diagonal cut from that score to this first score here. Not all the way to the tip, but to the score line. And then of course we do the same thing down here. And I'm doing it very quickly, but take your time. Okay. And then we come down here to that middle score. We're going over a half of an inch. And we are going to cut all the way from the edge to the big score line here. And then this score line down to this edge. Okay, give it a turn. Middle score line, we're cutting from the top all the way up in there, all the way down. And this is discarded. Same over here. 
Just make sure you're cutting not from the cut line, but from that score line up above it. Okay, and then you would repeat the same thing by cutting away your little corners on a slight angle, just like we just did. Same thing. So do that to both of your small pieces and you're ready to go. Okay, so if you have decided, yes, I want to do this second like matte color of cardstock or metallic or whatever, uh, like I have done here before your pattern paper, uh, then that's what we'll do now. So I'm going to use this red cardstock to demonstrate that. And so this was your front piece. Remember we labeled it front and this measured seven and an eighth by two and three quarters. So that means this needs to be two and a half instead of two and three quarters by six and seven eighths. So it's that one big tick before the seven, six and seven eighths six and seven eighths. Okay, and if you've done it right, this should nest right in the middle with an eighth of an inch all the way around. And rather than jumping to the next piece of this, let's just go to the paper. So I've just picked this pretty paper. This is from close to my heart. It's kind of a little bit older. Uh, this piece is also going to be on that front, so nested on this. So you need now to go another quarter of an inch smaller on both of those measures, which is check yourself, make sure, had a little boo-boo before, okay. So again, the paper measure is six and five-eighths by two and a quarter. Isn't that cute? Pretty. Now we'll move to the back. This is our base. We've already cut it uh, a seven and an eighth by four and three quarters. So that means this one needs to be six and seven eighths by four and a half, right? So six and seven eighths. Okay. And check yourself. Always check before you go too much further. Looks great. And so the paper that goes in there will measure six and five eighths by four and a quarter. So I think I'll do the four and a quarter first this time. And then I can look over here on my ruler to say where six and five eighths is right there. Six and five eighths. Six and five eighths. Okay. Okay. Again, check. Beautiful. Okay. Now you have this piece, which is not tricky. It's just a little different. Um, you're only going to need two, even though you have three of these, but remember the one is in the center. It's just a support. So it doesn't need cardstock. And if you remember this measure before we did this slice is six and an eighth by four and three quarters. So you are going to cut a mat that is a quarter of an inch shorter and less tall. So that equals five and seven eighths by, uh, what was this? Four and three quarters, so four and a half, okay? Now you can lay it on here to check it and make sure that this is gonna work. You can make a little pencil mark, but I'm basically leaving an eighth of an inch here and here and also here. We see it's perfectly fine. And now you can kind of rotate your little cutting mat Grab your craft knife, hold everything in place. And first, not the knife, the pencil. Let's make a pencil mark from that tip up there down to this. Just kind of carefully eyeball over here. I'm looking at one eighth here, one eighth there. It goes from the tip to there. And now we can remove that bottom one and cut this one. Okay, so we'll do this one and check it. And the other one can just be cut from this one, like a template. Okay, let's see how this turned out. Pretty nice, lovely. Okay, so do that again with another piece of the red. You have plenty here. Just kind of trace this out and cut it the very same way. You don't have to do all this stuff again. And don't forget that, you know, one of them is going to go one way and the other is going to go the other way because each will be on the sides of the box. So you want to flip this around, whoops, this way. 
Okay, looks good. Okay, now for the pattern paper, same exact kind of situation. Now, if you're using a pattern like I am that has a direction to it and it's okay to turn it like this, then great. Uh, otherwise, just kind of pay attention to, you know, your pattern. But I have room. Do I have room for both? Might have to turn one this way to do this and this way to do this one. Okay, so just kind of map it out first before you start cutting. All right, so because the matte paper was cut five and seven eighths by four and a half, these need to be five and five eighths by four and a quarter each. And you'll do that very same thing that we did before. Uh, if you have an easier way of doing this, feel free. But if I were doing it the same exact way, I would make sure I had an eighth of an inch showing all the way around. Grab my ruler and my pencil. Hold everything tight and then just make a mark or a line one eighth of an inch and then cut that away, okay? Use this, trace it onto here, but go in the other way, don't forget, because it's gonna go this way now. Okay, and just to really hit home so you don't overlook that step, let's check this first, make sure it's good. Looks great, and of course this goes on here. Everything's looking really good. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this one, and rather than cutting it the same way, we gotta flip it. So you can do that in one fell swoop no pencil line required. Just make sure you don't get it out of kilter. And we'll make a nice cut this way on that second piece. Okay, so now you've got one going this way, one going this way, just like you should. <laughs> okay, now you've got all your pieces, you're ready to go. You can go back. I will put a timestamp on when I started the assembly directions, and I will also add a timestamp to fast forward to cutting your own pieces as opposed to purchasing the SVG file. Uh, all links will be below. Any products that I use, I'll try to list them and link them. Always remember if I link to anything from Elizabeth Craft Designs, say like the petal pink paper, and I link it down there, that is a 10% discount link for you to buy anything on the site at all. Uh, not just that product. So that is a thank you from me. Okay, as I come to a close here, I'll start filling back up my little caddy here. I hope you like the project, no matter which way you decided to put it together. I hope you do give it a try and enjoy it and fill her up. I think I'm going to use that other one for the kitchen. It has sort of a kitchen feel, you know, with that checker and the red and the white. I think I might use that in the kitchen as a little caddy for condiments. Maybe even put it out if we have people over. We're having hot dogs and hamburgers. Wouldn't that be cute? Put like a ketchup bottle, mustard, some utensils, some napkins rolled up in there. All kinds of cute ideas. I don't want to forget my clip here. So I thank you for joining me. I hope you liked a different project besides a planner page this time. I'll be back next week with something brand new. Thanks for watching.